So, I wanted to talk to you guys about the uh, most skipped parts of davening. Because, uh, you know, I've been thinking about davening lately. Someone told me that all that stuff after the brachos, you know the brachos, all that stuff after the brachos is actually like the arisa. And I was like, ah, oh, seriously? So I've never, ever went past uh, Hanoi Sein Lai Never been past there. Between there and Baruch Shomar is like this blank spot where I'm like, oh, there's the Ketores and the Shema. I'm saying Shema anyway. Why do I have to say this? So I went through this whole little, uh, you know, kind of discovery session where I've decided that, you know, I skip pretty much everything in Davening. You know, I say what kids in like eight, like kid, like eight-year-old kids are taught to say, that's kind of what I still say. I think I'm going from my like Manhattan day school days, no, even better, my Yeshiva Katana sitter party when I got my Shiloh sitter with the blue. Now I hear they're giving Art Squirrel. I hear that Art Squirrel has really like dug in their monopoly and, you know, they're holding strong in the Froom sitter department. I always thought of Art Squirrel as kind of like a modernish sitter company because they had English and they have books with Rav Shalabachik and, you know, they have the Israel prayer. That's not Froom. That's real Froom people. We don't say the Israel prayer. Israel, you know, whatever. We don't say the prayer. It's not because we don't like Israel, by the way. It's because we want to get out of shul. That's really the truth. I mean, the Froom of your shul is the less likely you are to spend on things like the Israel prayer and taking out the Torah. I just wrote about this, actually. I mean, think about it. The longer your shul takes to take, takes to take out the Torah, I know it's redundant, the less from they are. It's true. I was in Berkeley, and they take like a half hour to take out the Torah. Yeah, yeah, sit around, and the women take it, and they go here, and they go there, and it's the whole thing. In Yeshiva, we took it out, we threw it on the bima, read, Gesundheit, that was it. Anyway... I skip that stuff between the brachos and brach shomar. But let me tell you what I say every day. I say brachos shachar, I say the brachos, you know, because I don't, uh, you know, whatever. I'm good. I'm good with not being a slave or a guy. It's good. Um, brach shomar, yehi chavod, ashrei, yeshtavach, all that stuff between shema, shema, and shmon asrei. And while I'm taking off my still, and if I'm in an extra jovial, jovial mood, maybe I'll say ashrei. So I get my two ashreis, and then I get the third at mincha, so apparently I have my insured chelik and olam haba, but then when I do other evil things, I've lost that chelik, so everything cancels each other out, and I'm probably on square one. Anyway, um, who says the Wednesday yom? I mean, if I was in shul every day, I probably still wouldn't say the Wednesday yom. The other prayer, and seriously, art scroll, you got to do something about this, man. You really got to do something. Hodu. Hodu is an awesome, awesome prayer. We'll give thanks. You do hodu. You don't have to do the halalukas. You feel like you got it all in. But it's this long, unbroken parrot. It just keeps going and going, you know? The Shiloh sitter, and I don't know if the corn sack, I'm not such a fan of the corn sack, not because it's modern orthodox, not because, you know, whatever, I don't want to appear too left-wing, no. Because they put the English and the Hebrew on the opposite sides of the, sides of the art scroll. The art scroll has the monopoly, so I've grown up on art scroll pretty much, so I'm so ingrained in my system, I've been conditioned to read the Hebrew and the English, not the Hebrew and the English. You understand? So it's, it's completely like a, like a psychological thing. It's also aesthetics, because the, the, the sitter, the pages are thin. And I don't know, I'm a rough sitter user, you know what I'm saying? I use the sitter to clap, I do stuff with my sitter. I slap people on the back of the head when they forget to say Yala Biyavo, and I see they don't, didn't repeat, whatever. I forgot to say it last night, but that's another thing. How many of you repeat Shmona Esrei if you don't say Yala Biyavo? Or do you psychologically block it out of your system? Like, yeah, yeah, I said Yala Biyavo, you know, God, like... Are you, do you really care if I say Yal Biyav? I know it's Rosh Chodesh. How do I know it's Rosh Chodesh? Because ah, i got to say hollow in the morning. It's a half hollow, full hollow. Forget about it. Full hollow is one of the things. If Rosh Chodesh was full hollow, no one would say hollow. Which, which, is, which is funny because like the, the modern people say hollow on uh, Yom HaTzmu and I'm thinking like, oh, extra prayers, oh, whatever. Give me a break. Fine. So, of all, you know, like I don't even say that stuff in Shul. Be'yitein Lecha. That if, if I said Be'yitein Lecha, by the time I got out of shul, it would be like two hours after Shabbos. Um, there's a lot of stuff. Rich Shemay, all the, all the like Aramaic stuff. I mean, the Nome is like a Boletzion. Um, Az Yashir, I know, it's pretty auspicious. It's a pretty darn cool prayer. But I don't say it because I only say it when it's written normal, but it, when it's written like leaning, it bothers me. It like doesn't work for my, uh, my flow. Um, you know, some things are like super quick, like hallelujahs I say on an off and on, like if I'm feeling in a very praiseworthy, thank the Lord for providing me something really good or really bad. It's weird. Prayer for me, is, it, if I'm in just this regular, like, whatever mode, eh, davening, whatever. But if 
I'm really hurting, prayer is great. Or if I'm really praiseful, prayer is great. Like most people, when they're hurting, prayer is all good. But for me, when I'm in this happy mood, I'm all praising the Lord and stuff. So, you know, also when I'm feeling down, but more so actually when I'm happy. That's kind of interesting now that I think about it. Um, what else is skipped? There's lots of, like, I mean, there are some heavily skipped parts of Dobbing. I mean, Hodu Tachnun on Monday and, one, uh, on Monday and Thursday, um, Barshi Nafshi, Ludovid, ay, eh, give me a break. Um, Hoshanos, uh, seriously, I'm walking around Hoshanos, all I know is, Hoshana Lemacha Beirenu, and then like, all hell breaks loose, I have no idea what the heck is going on, and I'm just walking around, poking people in their butts with a lulu. That's it. Kinos, talk about mourning, my God, Tisha is coming up, I never say Kinos, because it's like, it's so painful, it doesn't allow me to mourn properly when I say Kinos. It's just over and over and over, and we're sitting on the floor, and in my shul in San Jose, the floors aren't wide enough for you actually to sit, so you have to, like, sit, like, under a seat, and it's a whole thing, you know, and they, and they don't have, you know, you have to bring a milk crate. That's really, like, people should sell milk crates outside of Tisha Bob. That'd be kind of cool, selling milk crates. 